So let's talk through some tactics for the Warhammer 40k shooting phase, which the best way is to marshal your gunnery commands to lay low the enemy, and what pitfalls, traps and mistakes might you want to avoid. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Warhammer 40k general tactics once more. In this video I thought I'd do an updated look at the 40k shooting phase, perhaps an area of the game that sounds like it should be quite simple, point your guns at the enemy and fire. But realistically there's actually quite a lot of ways that you could potentially go wrong or manage the risk badly. I've definitely had some games where I felt the other players made kind of painfully bad choices with what they chose to prioritise and what order they chose to shoot in. In this video I thought I'd just talk through a whole bunch of general principles, maybe to highlight some things that you could aim for and some things that you might well want to avoid when laying down fields of fire for your army. First up, before focusing on some specific things, I feel like one of the biggest mistakes that you can make in shooting in Warhammer 40k in general is not taking stock and making a plan before you start. Ideally right at the start of the turn you really could do with just looking at the current board state and decide which enemy units are the ones that you absolutely need to destroy this turn and what will be bonus targets if all goes well. Obviously it would be great if your army could just blitz away the entire enemy army in one turn but realistically unless you're playing a very unbalanced game that's not going to happen. So the decision becomes which things do you choose to eliminate and which things are going to be left till later, obviously weighing up risk management here, as given that it's a dice game any one unit could let you down. Perhaps some of the most important things to take stock of are which enemy units will deal critical damage to you if left alive. That's kind of basics really, people generally tend to try and focus on destroying the big scary thing that the opponent has. But beyond that you can also prioritise things like destroying units on objectives to deny enemy victory points. Occasionally and particularly towards the late game that might be more high priority than actually taking down the damage dealers. As well as that it's maybe worth assessing which units that you could shoot are lower priority this turn. Maybe things that are either tougher, slower or lower threat. Things that really don't matter too much whether they live or die this turn and you could put them off until a later turn. You do kind of need to assess these things in the movement phase as that's likely going to influence where you move your units into position for line of sight or range and you might need to declare other shooting synergy type units earlier in the turn. Some things you might declare in the shooting phase, like say Imperial Guard Scout Sentinels with their rerolls and things. Other things you might need to do in the command phase, like say Space Marine Oath of Moment. Perhaps another thing to achieve, if you possibly can, is to have some redundancy. Certain units that can draw lines of sight on multiple different enemy units, just to account for randomness. Any one unit in your army could let you down and leave something unexpectedly alive. It's good to have things to fill in the gaps. We might get lucky and something gets shot down surprisingly easily. That means that your unit with options could then go on to shoot something else. While we're on that, if you're actually deciding for units to shoot first or last, probably one of the easiest choices you can make is to fire units with limited options first. Any of your units on the board that could literally only shoot one thing, you may as well generally do those first as it's not like they've really got any big decisions to make. If you leave them till last and then your other units have destroyed the one thing that they could take down, their shooting is kind of redundant anyway. And by firing them first you gain the information for how much damage they've done, so you can better take that into your plans when you're declaring the things that are a bit more flexible. And also factor in opponent casualty removal, sometimes that could mean that the enemy could hide units from your more serious guns, say if you took aim with some small arms first and killed a few units that were out of cover, the enemy pulls those models so you now can't see their unit anymore. That could be very disappointing if you had a massive great big super heavy that really wanted to shoot them or something. Also with unit flexibility, artillery and barrage weapons can often be a very good choice to fire last. Most of the time they're kind of long range and will have a decent choice of targets. That often means that you can assess what's happened after all of your more limited choice units have fired and then decide exactly where their extra firepower is going to be most effective whether or not it's killing the last couple of models on an objective marker, punishing a fragile damage dealer, or going for broke and trying to plink the last wound off a big tough damage dealer that the enemy has, that if you don't do anything about it, perhaps will be causing major problems next turn. Otherwise, beyond just deciding which enemy targets most need to die in the enemy army, the shooting phase is often a bit of a game of matching the optimal damage to their best targets, basically fire weapons at things that they're good at killing if it's possible. So high volume of fire things with anti-infantry type rules, fire at infantry, big heavy things with lots of AP and lots of damage against enemy tanks, and there's plenty in between, like say, plasma being very nice at killing standard space marines. 
In general, in 40k, you're paying more for units if their weapons have more strength, AP, and damage. So it doesn't really make sense to waste those weapons against things that aren't really using those rules. Though sometimes it can be the right choice if that enemy unit is just going to be super valuable to destroy. For strength purposes, usually you want to be wounding things on a 3 plus or better, at least most of the time, unless you've got other fancy rules like lethal hits or plus 1 to wound or something helping you out. More AP is going to have high value going into higher saves than lower stuff. If you've got weapons that perfectly push an armoured target down to their invulnerable save, like say a Terminator squad, that's often pretty good. And if you can manage to match the damage characteristic to the wounds characteristic of the target, that can be big. Say for example, damage 2 weapons firing at standard space marines, damage 3 against Terminators perhaps, and really big high damage stuff into monsters and vehicles. There's plenty of other rules that can make that a little bit more complicated. Say high damage profiles are going to be good against things that have an inbuilt damage minus 1. Say the big Deathwing Knight Terminators, and feel no pain for multi-wound infantry can often mean that firing multi-damage shots into those can have a bit more value than otherwise. Just in general, you usually want to try and coordinate your units firing into their optimal targets, though it definitely isn't always possible, and you might just be making do with the best that you can do. And sometimes it could absolutely make sense to fire a whole bunch of small arms into a tank, if that's the thing that most needs to die. And at that point in the game, it's really not relevant to the game whether or not they just smash the enemy infantry unit that they could otherwise attack. For practically doing that though, it does mean that you need to have at least some grasp of the enemy army's defensive profiles. I'd say if you had to have limited information about the enemy army, you're probably better off to know exactly how tough they are and what guns will most reliably kill them, as opposed to exactly what damage they might do. Warhammer 40k is a vast game with a massive amount of units, you probably haven't come across all of them yet. If you are very unsure about the defensive profile of any one unit, it does make a lot of sense just to quickly check that with your opponent before you're planning shooting things. Lots of things might be very big and obvious, a big armoured tank is likely to have high toughness and high saves, but you don't really want to be surprised by a statistic halfway through shooting, say finding out that you've just fired a whole bunch of damage 2 weapons into an infantry squad that's actually got 3 wounds apiece or thinking that a tank was toughness 10 when it's actually toughness 12, so it turns out that you're wounding on a 5+, plus. it would have been far better to fire a different characteristic weapon at that tank. Knowing the enemy's defensive tricks can be kind of handy as well, minus 1 damage can greatly influence what weapons are efficient against a target, and some things could make firing an enormous damage characteristic gun less of a good idea, say for example hitting a Rogal Dawn with a rail gun, where it can cancel the damage once per game. The right gun for the right defensive profile can apply on a bit more of a micro sort of level when you're shooting as well. Sometimes the order in which you fire your guns even just on one model can make a difference as to how much you'd kill. Say for example if you had this armager Helverin trying to light up this squad of Chaos Raptors and one of them had already taken a wound from somewhere else earlier in the game. The choice of whether it fires its stubber or auto cannons is actually a meaningful one. In this case it would make sense to fire the damage one stopper at the raptors, as if it does happen to deal exactly one wound then you're basically not wasting the auto cannon shots taking down a one wound model, each auto cannon shot if the save is failed will take down an entire extra raptor, so getting literally slightly more wounds dealt out of the exact same model firing the exact same guns at that target, that could apply to different units targeting the same enemy as well. Say for example, if you had a bunch of space marines with bolt rifles, it might be worth trying to use them to plink off that last wound, and then go on to something with higher damage characteristics, if you were absolutely sure that you were still going to be firing both of those units at the same partly injured squad. Otherwise, for a few other rules of thumb for the shooting phase, I'd say it'd be a mistake to miss out on easy wins most of the time. This again is definitely about just making a plan for what most needs to die in the shooting phase and particularly in identifying enemy units that maybe won't be too much expenditure in firepower to just take down something really quite valuable to them. Maybe most commonly anything that's very fragile and also very dangerous and high points cost to the enemy. Perhaps things like Eldar Fire Dragons could be a good example, a unit where their damage is far better than their defence. It could also apply to things like Space Rain Aggressors, which have got good damage but their Gravis armour isn't actually that tough for their big points cost or even just units that have one of their optimal targets within easy range of say their secondary guns, you could have a big repulsor executioner, just get some very cheap casualties on enemy infantry while its main guns are still doing its primary targets, I think it becomes a point where it would just be kind of silly not to invest that amount of firepower to remove those enemy models in the game, 
perhaps even if they're not going to have direct impact on the game in the next turn. It does depend on the overall picture though, whether or not you absolutely need to dedicate every iota of firepower to your primary targets. Just anything that tips the balance of being very easy to kill for the amount of utility that the enemy will get out of it. And perhaps make sure that you do have some redundancy for units to fall back and kill them if the first unit somehow fails. I feel like if you did have a unit of fire dragons up close that just disembarked and destroyed something important, it would just really be a bad idea to have wound up at the end of your shooting phase and somehow left half the squad alive ready to strike all over again. Another general idea that could be handy for certain units is maybe starting the shooting phase by giving your very biggest guns the best chance to shine. There's some weapons in Warhammer 40k that are just very swingy. Say things like the Vindicator which has both got a D6 shot and a D6 damage component or units that maybe just have one or two really high power anti-tank shots where certainly you might be odds on to hit and wound your target but a single unlucky hit or wound roll might mean that you're doing far less damage than you might have hoped for. For these units the average damage for them is often relatively good but realistically they could just roll super high and do some obscene numbers of damage or roll a low number of shots and then miss them. They could do absolutely nothing. Balanced around everything else, I feel like if you can, they're a pretty reasonable choice to fire early on in the shooting phase and ideally just ploughing them into something that's got a lot of toughness and is an important enemy unit. Sure, if they do average damage to it, it could be alright, but just in case they do roll ridiculously hot and kind of go nuclear, it's kind of nice to target something that will actually meaningfully feel that damage rather than just give you loads of overkill on the same target. Then after you've fired your very biggest and swingiest guns, the rest of the things in the shooting phase could be maybe used to mop up what's left. More reliable volume fire, either dedicated to optimal targets for it, or if your big heavy hitter has left an enemy target on just a few wounds left, then try and whittle it down with the secondary fire that's maybe a little bit more about stacking saves. I did mention casualty removal earlier. It's definitely something to bear in mind if you're firing against a big enemy unit, Perhaps particularly if the squad is perhaps half out of line of sight, your opponent might be able to do crafty things by pulling the units inside so you can't target them later. Another big consideration could be the charge phase as well. Say for example this unit of Soul Brethren want to charge this Poxwalker squad. There can definitely be times where it might literally make sense not to target the unit with shooting even if you could. Particularly when it's going to extend your big charge range to maybe slightly unacceptable levels. For example, for this unit charging, if you just make the charge without doing any shooting casualties, they've got a 7 inch charge which is odds on to succeed. If they shoot and the opponent pulls the first two pox walkers, that actually goes up to a 9 inch charge, far more risky and unlikely there. And a couple of casualties that you might kill in the shooting phase just might be in no way worth it, versus giving yourself the chance to miss out on the massive melee of the unit should they make contact in close combat. This one can be particularly relevant when trying to make charges out of deep strike as well. If you're in a position where your opponent could just remove one model and make your charge from a 9 inch all the way up to a 10 or 11 inch, again it could well be worth foregoing that bit of shooting or sending it to hit something else and giving yourself every chance to make that charge. Another big option in the shooting phase is the chance to use a command point reroll. For some armies you just might not really be able to budget one for this if you've got other necessary stratagems that you absolutely need to use this turn, but for some armies it could be a possibility. Being able to reroll any one single dice can definitely have massive value in the right circumstances, though I feel like it's maybe a bit overused by newer players. I feel like one time to usually try and resist it is for hit rerolls on big shots, maybe things like a last cannon. If you reroll a hit with a last cannon against, say, a toughness 10 3 plus save vehicle, on average you gain around about 1.6 damage for the command point expenditure, generally not really seen as a particularly impressive deal for what you can usually get out of them. Generally if you use it for say wound rolls or damage rolls you're likely to get a higher output out of that. Say for example if you were doing a wound reroll for the same last cannon, on average you gain an extra 2.5 wounds compared with the wound being failed, just because you already know that that shot happens to have hit, whereas if you reroll the hit roll you don't actually know whether that successful hit is going to wound or not yet. Otherwise damage results have passed enemy saves already, so no chance of a crafty and vulnerable save from getting rid of your damage. Say if you had a d6 damage weapon on an enemy target, re-rolling a roll of 1 would yield you an average 2 to 3 sort of damage, whereas average yield on a 2 is around about 1 or 2. Finally for really big guns, re-rolling the number of shots can often be a good idea, 
Say, for example, if you had a Vindicator Demolisher Cannon rolling a 1 on its D6 plus 3 shots, if you chose to re-roll that 1, on average, that would get you an extra 3.3 damage. One of the highest yields out of these particular examples, if you just literally want to throw in command points for as much damage on the enemy as possible. Sometimes that's really not such a bad idea, though I think in reality for most games in Warhammer 40k, you're probably better off reserving command point rerolls where it actually makes the difference between you killing a unit or not doing so. As as well as just potentially getting extra damage, it can also give you a kind of swing in the game as well. Say you get to the end of your shooting phase, this is the last unit that could conceivably destroy that big Necron Doomsday tank. It's got 5 wounds left and you roll a 3 on a damaged D6 weapon, even a 1 third chance to remove that vehicle and stop it from firing in the next turn. That could actually be worth the command point reroll, because as well as fully destroying the tank, you're also saving whatever units it was just about to blow up in your turn. That might be a really good use of a command point reroll even if it would be against usual sort of damage kind of logic to re-roll a mid-result on a damage D6. For that reason, my overall take for command points would generally be to typically aim to use command points if it's going to make a difference as to whether something lives or dies, rather than just plugging them in for pure damage. If you are just doing pure damage sort of things, then it's probably best to aim for the things with the truly colossal damage output. Maybe massive great big gun profiles out there with damage D6 plus 6 or something like that. Dedicated tank destroyer type things. Usually I'd try and aim to keep the command points till later in the shooting phase if you really need them. You don't really want to be throwing a precious command point away for a unit that was already going to die to something else and you'd just not tried yet. I'd either use them for a last chance to destroy that particular target or maybe occasionally to try and complete the kill. So it could make a really big difference if you manage to fully destroy one unit and then allow your last powerful gunline unit to fully focus on something else, not having to worry about leaving something important alive. Either way, it certainly needs to weigh them up against whatever else you'd want to use command points for. You can often get better value out of them rather than just re-rolling a wound roll or damage result or something. Finally, and kind of playing into that a little bit, while you're efficiently trying to blast apart the enemy army, you both want to try and avoid underkill for enemy units, but also overkill as well. Underkill here I define as failing to kill a unit and leaving it just on a small amount of health, perhaps most commonly because you've decided to be too greedy, maybe split fire amongst a whole load of different targets, and leave lots of them just partially damaged but still basically fully functional for your opponent's turn. It's often far better to just fully destroy a couple of units rather than a sort of mid damage, say four or five of them. Just because as with the command point reroll, if you leave lots of things alive, they're all going to be hitting you back as well. And your own forces could certainly pay the price for the split fire. If something absolutely is truly game changingly critical, say for example, you're a space marine player fighting against Tyranids, they've got a big nasty Tyran effect sat on an objective, and it's just got one wound left. The only unit that you can kill it with now is this Predator Annihilator. You might be tempted to try and divide fire, maybe try and kill it with one or two LAS cannons, but given LAS cannons could easily fail to either hit or wound, you might genuinely just be best off firing all three LAS cannons directly into this big beastie, even if the maximum amount of damage that they can do is one wound. Sometimes you just absolutely need to push the percentage chance of you destroying a critical target as high as it possibly can be. If the price of failure is an enormous swing in the game, with the other player getting a huge advantage in damage and victory points. I say that for newer players, probably leaving things underkilled is perhaps the greater mistake compared with overkill, though I'd certainly argue that it's definitely possible to go too far the other way as well. Maybe playing in a little bit to what I mentioned earlier about giving your big guns the best chance to shine. Say for example, if you did absolutely need that Tyran effect dead, if there possibly was a way to finish it off with some small units to allow your big guns to fire elsewhere, that might be preferable. Say if you had a squad of stern guard about, they might be able to plink the last wound with a devastating wound, even if it might have been more preferable for them to fire their guns that kill light infantry somewhere else in the enemy army. If then focusing fire brings down the big monster though and allows your scary gun tank to take aim at something completely different guilt-free, that could be the better choice. I say this is particularly true if you're earlier on in the shooting phase and you've got loads of options. Say you've got an enemy unit with just two or three wounds left, you might be best off trying to divide fire a bit with multiple other units. Try and see if you can take that last few wounds down with minimal investment, 
rather than immediately going for your next absolutely massive gun to try and slog into that, say wasting the entire firepower of a Vindicator to take down an already heavily injured target, when that same tank might have been far better served trying to destroy something that was that was far more intact due to the chance of swinging high and doing loads of damage. In any case, certainly loads to think about in the shooting phase. I feel like there's lots of different rules of thumb that you can have going on at the same time, and often it is just genuinely going to be a strategic decision and risk management as to whether, say, you prioritise gunning down a unit on an objective, or, say, firing the exact right profile guns at the things that they'll kill best and just overall try and deal as much damage to the enemy army as possible. It might depend on your risk for how few guns you're willing to dedicate to try and finish off a critical injured enemy unit, as opposed to dividing fire and getting efficient damage by destroying other bonus targets out there. In general, I feel like the 40k shooting phase has lots of things that you can do right, but there are certainly some choices that seem like they could be just outright wrong. Lots of ways for players to get far less damage output out of their army than they really deserve. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the 40k shooting phase down in the comments below. Look forward to hearing all your ideas as per normal. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new Warhammer content just about every day. Finally, if you'd like to help support the channel and keep all of these videos coming, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's linked down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a few advantages. Seeing certain videos early, channel patrons will have been able to watch this video for a good time in advance of its release on YouTube, get to take part in occasional votes as to what sort of things I make next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.